for watching Dro TV. Welcome back to the Cannabis Show. Our guest today is Morgan Coffee, CSO of Star Hemp Manufacturing. Morgan, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Star Hemp Manufacturing and your role at the company? Yeah, sure. Uh, we're located in LaBelle, Florida, so South Florida. Um, I've been with the company for almost a year now. So uh, at Star, we do lots of different things, but uh, we do everything from seed to uh, end of packaging. So we grow everything, we extract everything. I formulate all the products. We produce all of those here in-house. We bottle them, do all the labels, everything else. We do white labeling. We also work with different doctor's offices all across the U.S., different veterinarians. And then we also have our own brand that we travel with and sell retail and at shows. Awesome. Now, CSO is a chief science officer. What's what's your background to have such a prestigious title, I guess? Sure. Well, uh, my background, you know, really started uh, years and years ago, years and years ago in produce. So uh, I grew produce on a family farm in Kentucky for many, many years. Um, got into heirloom produce, started doing some strain hunting and things like that uh, for different heirloom produce. And uh, from there, you know, really got into the cannabis game. I've been in cannabis in one way or another for about 23 years now. Wow. So that really started with more of the growing end in, uh, in California, um, setting up large grow operations, hydroponics, aeroponics, aquaponics. Spent many years doing that. That just led into the extraction uh, as well. But growing was my first passion. Then I started doing a lot of extraction. All of that really led into uh, more of a natural way of looking about things, doing whole plant extraction, not only in cannabis, but also in many other herbs. So I really started getting into herbal blending, which led me into the formulation part of this. So all of that together is what led me today to be a CSO of this company. Very cool. And how old of a company is Star, uh, Star Hemp Manufacturing? Um, well, it's been around for almost two years now. Okay. And was this something born out of the Hemp Act? Uh, well, it was actually born, uh, um, our CEO, Brian Dickerson, uh, had another business partner and they were doing it more on the medical end, looking at um, seizure patients and things of that nature. So they really looked at this and doing it in a completely uh, clinical way. So um, as far as all of our equipment, everything else, you know, we use all pharmaceutical grade equipment. So we use only the high end of the high end of what we could get uh, to produce the high end product that we have now. Awesome. And I do have some of the product here. I've got some of your canine calming chews for my dog. He gets really bad anxiety uh, through thunderstorms. So we've been uh, using some of that. It's tough to tell how much is helping and, and how much it's not, because sometimes we hear thunder and we give him one and it's almost too late, right? Um, but he has been more chill at night, I'd say. So I'm not sure how long... Well, I guess you could probably allude to some insight, I guess. Uh, how long are these supposed to last for if I give them one at two o'clock in the afternoon? Sure. You're looking anywhere from like four to six hours is what we're seeing. Okay. Um, it's, you know, we, ha we haven't spoken to any of the dogs, but that's what we're noticing uh, <laughs> as, okay. as we go through this. Yeah. We work with a lot of canine rescues all across Florida. So, you know, a lot of the testing, R&D and all of that. What we did was use, uh, you know, these natural products on uh, these rescue dogs, which are a lot more anxious. Well, I wouldn't say a lot more anxious, but very anxious. Sure. Um, so in seeing the help that that brings to these rescue dogs as they're getting acclimated back to uh, having a good life, uh, we've seen a lot of great improvement quickly. That's awesome. One of the questions I was going to ask you is, you know, obviously uh, the powers that be, the FDA can't approve these things. Um, so how do you do some of your research and development? Well, I mean, a lot of the, if we look back through time as well, there's been lots of studies that have been done on different parts of the cannabis plant, CBD as well. Um, you know, so we look back at a lot of those things and that's what a lot of my formulations and everything are based on. Uh, once we come up with a product, uh, a lot of times the R and D and everything is done um, um, through, like I was saying, through rescues, uh, but we also work with lots of different doctors as well um, that are into the more natural way of healing. And also, you know, we're seeing a lot more of doctors um, all across. You know, we work with a lot of orthopedics. We uh, work with a lot of ear, nose, and throat, um, things of that nature. And these doctors and the patients are just starting to ask for more natural things. I think we're finally getting to a point 
where people in general are not trusting pharmaceutical companies as much as they used to. So sure. people are starting to do their own research, looking into things, and what that usually leads to is somewhere in the cannabis realm because this plant is so important to everything that we do. Right. Yeah, and I mean, just because FDA stamps something, uh, every commercial you see where it's like, did you get sick from this drug? That was an FDA approved drug. So, um, you know, uh, not to get too sidetracked, but yeah, I guess things need to be regulated, but at what point is it over-regulation or, you know, misregulation maybe? Sure. Um, I'm thinking also the big things is, you know, right now, just because it's not regulated, you've got a lot of folks out there that are just, you just put whatever on a label. So, you know, to, to everybody that I talk to about this, uh, you know, I just try to stress how important it is to know exactly where everything comes from that you're taking. So that's why we took that stand. It's very important for us uh, to do everything from seed to sale. Um, every part of the plant, you know, you can actually scan the uh, QR code on our uh, boxes that tells you exactly when the plant was harvested, exactly uh, when it was formulated. So it's literally a track from everything from the very beginning until it gets in your hands. So seeing those things, that's really how you can tell when you're buying something from a reputable company or not, just because it's not regulated by the government. Um, you know, the people that are doing this the right way are self-regulated. Yeah, uh, self-regulation. Why would you want to create a product that's going to be harmful or people aren't going to like? Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's still plenty of people self-regulating and, um, you know, it's not like that doesn't exist just because the FDA can't stamp something. So you guys have uh, awesome quality packaging. I know when we met at KushCon and I was speaking with you and Sabrina, you guys had mentioned, uh, do you know how many different uh, locations you guys have your products in? Uh, when it comes to the white labeling and everything else, I wouldn't be able to tell you that directly. That's out of my uh, realm here, but uh, we're, we're quite you know quite a few and growing daily. So uh, it's pretty amazing to see uh, the sales going out and the different companies we're working for already. Yeah, that's or awesome. With. Yeah. And uh, yeah, right on your website, uh, it has a lot of useful information, like you said, from seed to packaging you guys do it all everything's done right there on uh on your site so that's good to know especially uh you know as supply chain goes things can happen from one point to the next so you guys are able to control all of that uh which is certainly very good on product yeah i have one of your your products here that uh you guys gifted us when we met you guys at the KushCon. this is a, a hemp flavin can you explain what a flavonoid is and why is it important? Why should we be using this? Sure, absolutely. So a uh, flavonoid at the very base is a phytonutrient. So it's found in lots of different vegetables and lots of different plants. Uh, what that does in the plant is it uh, attracts pollinators, um, um, gets rid of pests, uh, helps stop and prevent diseases. Uh, it's also like an antimicrobial, antiparasitic. Um, antifungal. Um, so what it does is it really just protects the cells of the plant. Um, so in looking at this, what we did was uh, we saw that this is helping the plant in so many different ways. And just the thought of, you know, hey, what could this do in the human body? Uh, we started diving deeper into this. I uh, found some studies back from the 80s uh, saying that canaflavin A and B, which are two of the uh, uh, flavonoids we've been able to pull out of the cannabis plant, 30 times stronger than any inset. So if your aspirins or anything like that, being 30 times stronger coming naturally where you're not having those same problems in the body with you know taking aspirin every day, um, we just really started looking into that, trying to figure out exactly how we could pull these flavonoids out of the plant. So in that, I created a uh, new extraction method where we could take lots and lots of these flavonoids and combine them together. The biggest problem and the reason that there hasn't been that many studies on flavonoids so far or since the 80s is flavonoids are only 0.15% of the fresh weight of cannabis. So you have to take a huge amount of cannabis for a very small amount of flavonoids. So in that was just, you know, spending years and years trying to figure out exactly how we were going to be able to pull these flavonoids out. So what we found once we pulled these out is the extreme anti-inflammatory properties of the flavonoid. If we can make the body less inflamed, helps with a lot of different things, pain being number one. But if you can think about most diseases, most diseases and uh, sickness are caused by inflammation. So we get rid of the inflammation, we get rid of a lot of problems that we have in the body. Yeah, it's true. Inf inflammation is one of the uh, biggest problems, I think, 
people don't even realize they're living with or dealing with. Um, and there's simple things like turmeric and, um, you know, natural anti-inflammatories that people can take, which they don't even know about. So I would imagine flavonoid, uh, I never heard of it and I'm a sure. very holistic with, you know, my medical approach. So, um, I'm definitely going to look more into it. Um, so this is uh, for canine. Is this something that can, can, or should just be given to him anytime? Or is there like a, if he's recovering from, so he just had, he's in here with me. Uh, cause if I don't let him in here, he scratches on the door, but he's 13. He's older. Once he hears me talking, he's got to come in. He just had oral surgery. He had to have one of his canines taken out. Um, so he's recovering. We got him off the antibiotics quicker than he was supposed to because he was having like really bad diarrhea. Is this something that can be taken anytime? Is it something if he's going to go in for a surgery, he should take before? Is it something he should take after? Sure. On, on this, you know, a lot of the rescue dogs and the dogs that we have here uh, on our property, uh, they get that daily. Uh, a lot of that, what that does is just with the inflammation, that just helps a lot. Um, but also, you know, you don't have to worry about any of the side effects. You know, the same things that happen in humans happen to dogs and happen to horses. So what we usually do, you know, if they're going to go to the vet or if we have somebody to come out, um, you know, the vets come out to work on the horses, we make sure that they get uh, that dose for sure that day. But most all of our animals that we have, whether it's on the ranch here at the lab or, uh, you know, at home, all of these animals get the, uh, the hemp flavin daily. Cool. I want to get talk a little bit more about research and development because one of the things I was interested in learning about is um, humans, we're test subjects. We can You can prescribe me something, I can take it and give you my feedback and say, oh, here's how I felt. This is when you do that to a horse or a dog, it's a lot harder to say, hey, tell me what happened. They can't really tell you what happened. But um, visually, it's a lot easier to look at a dog and say, this is what's going on. Where a human, I could lie and be like, no, no, my back, never had problems with my back. Or, or yeah, 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 no, it, it was perfect. It worked completely fine. Meanwhile, my back still hurts. Um, so when you collect all this data from doctors and rescues and uh, you know people that have horses, what are some of the biggest challenges you have to deal with in breaking down the data and really looking at, you know, he's, my dog's 30 pounds, he's 13 years old. It could be a hundred pound two-year-old Rottweiler or a 500 pound horse or, um, so what are some of the biggest challenges you guys deal with when taking this data back in and determining, you know, what to do with it for the products? Sure. Uh, one, one of the neatest things that we were able to do uh, was there's a doctor that actually did a clinical study on flavonoids uh, on our product, on the hemp flavin in general. So that was a, a huge help to us to look back through that data uh, from a uh, distinguished doctor um, that that also got ended up to, you know, taken to a white paper level and now it's under peer review uh, all across the U.S. in different spots. So that was a really neat thing uh, that was provided uh, to us uh, in the very early stages. Uh, when it comes to the animal part of it, uh, we've worked with some veterinarians. So with the rescues, you know, we find that a lot of these rescues at the very beginning have a lot of parasites. Uh, that led us to see that even in like, uh, you know, heartworm and things of that nature, we were able to see direct evidence of the heart shrinking in size. And the only thing that was given was the hemp flap. So that was, you know, some of that raw data that's just very direct is very easy to use. Some of the other data that we have to go through is just running the numbers. It's just making, you know, taking lots and lots of different tests and then bringing them down into smaller numbers. That way we can actually say something that is very descriptive of what this does or doesn't do. So it's just time, numbers, and uh, somebody crunching. Right. And that would, that's the data you use to determine what a dog would take versus a horse versus a person? Sure. I mean, on that, really, we just look at weight. So, you know, if we take something like a human and we can find these, uh, you know, the weight to microgram ratio, that's what helps us determine what the weight to microgram ratio would be in a horse. You know, we just take that, that, those numbers and then make them larger or make them smaller. Okay. I asked that too, because, uh, I have a friend of mine similar in weight and, uh, I can take like 
five times the amount of edibles that she can. And, uh, uh, so at first she was like, well, you're much bigger than me. And I'm like, well, I'm not, you know, trying to be nice, but you know, maybe 20, 25 pounds heavier than you. I shouldn't be able to take hundred milligrams and you take 10 milligrams and I'm still fine. And you're on the floor. So, uh, sure. Well, that's another thing with this, you know, you know, your cannabinoid system is different than, you know, the parts that we're using here. See, the, the hemp flab actually has no THC, no cannabinoids whatsoever in it. So when we're talking about the cannabinoid system and things of that nature, you know, it's a little bit different than the receptors where uh, the hemp flab is going to work towards. I forget if you gifted us this or if we bought it. Uh, so thank you if you did gift it to us. But uh, the purified hemp pulp, we've been putting this. We have three cats and a dog. And uh, we've been putting it in their food every morning for, I'd say, at least a few weeks now. Most of all of our pets get raw food and they're all pretty healthy. So I can't really say that there's been drastic changes with them. I mean, they're healthy, so maybe it's keeping them healthy, right? But can you talk about a product like this, the purified hemp pulp and what this is designed to do? What we've seen with that really, we have that in the human form as well. So that goes in the smoothie every morning uh, for me. So what we've seen with a lot of, a lot of different people is uh, just the, the overall gut health and inflammation as well. So you don't ache as much, your back doesn't hurt, you know, your joints don't hurt, you know, things of that nature. Just uh, we're looking at the same thing that like a, a CBD or something like that would do. So once that builds up in your body, uh, it does a lot of good things for the body, most anti-inflammatory properties as well. Awesome. And uh, one of our cats is picky what he eats. They've all eaten it, no problem. So most of their food is kind of mushy. And we always put a little water in there because we want them to stay hydrated. Put it right in there with a little water, mix it up with the food. And none of them have uh, turned their nose to it. So three cats and a dog, they all they all take it every morning, no problem. So I'm glad we got the approval. Yeah, I was going to say, there's, there's my testimonial for you. And Shadow, my dog, we we have noticed when we do give him uh, the calming chews, typically he's old, but he also, you know, where we are close to Orlando, I mean, the end of my street is technically Orlando. Uh, you know, there's car backfires and maybe it's gunshots. I don't know. Uh, fireworks, we can hear Disney. And so he gets scared late at night and when my girl gets home it's usually 7 seven thirty. so we're walking later than he wants to walk since we've started giving him the calming chews um he has been going for later walks um so whether you know it's something with the calming chews or not uh i would i would at least attribute some of that to the calming chews well, that's great yeah with those notes 10 milligrams um per chew, and then we also use the indica distillate. So that indica distillate, what we found is it really helps with more of the calming aspect of it. So you get the anti-inflammatory properties already, but then you also use that distillate. And what we're seeing is just, it's not like it knocks any of the pets out, but what it does is just help, you know, de-escalate that, uh, those feelings is what we've noticed. Right, right. Awesome. Well, there's lots of testimonials on the website. Can you talk about a story that maybe affected you the most as far as like what your products done and how it affected a rescue or an animal or a person? Sure. Uh, one of the neatest ones on the rescue side is the dog that we now have uh, here. Uh, but the uh, dog came in and had horrible bacterial infection from a tick bite. Um, so it's a, and it also had parasites that were just horrible. Um, so with this dog, we used a derm spray that has, uh, within two weeks, you could see all of the hair beginning to grow back. There was no more skin irritation whatsoever. So the dog went from uh, not wanting to uh, play or do anything at all uh, to just being a completely different dog within just two weeks. Really, the other neat thing about that was um, the size of the heart. So the heart worms horribly. And in using the hemp flap, uh, we took this dog back to the vet. And within that two-week period, uh, we were also able to see that the heart shrunk enough where we did not have to use any of the very dangerous uh, heart worm medication. So that was a really neat one on the animal side. And any special endorsements from uh, doctors or rescues or uh, those in the equine space, you know, where they've 
anecdotally, I guess, have said, oh, all of my horses, they, uh, any, you know, kind of endorsement from somebody that uh, really sits with you or made an impression on? Yeah, sure. I mean, the other really neat thing, we work with a lot of the equine uh, rescues as well. So a lot of the equine rescues that we um, work with, you know, started with one product, now they use all of them. Uh, so it's a really neat thing to see that it's not one product that works, but it's all of the ones that we make, especially, uh, you know, to see that in the rescue situation. So taking horses that are extremely malnourished, seeing how our pellets and uh, powder work on helping gain weight. Uh, it's also a really neat thing right now. We're in the middle of doing trials on antiparasitic cattle. So right now we're working with a couple of uh, uh, univer- or a university that's actually using this on cattle to do trials where you don't have to use any of the other uh, chemical-based uh, parasitics. So what we're seeing is uh, this is actually working in tune with getting rid of parasites in cattle. So improving that, now we can go back and look at how that's going to work for canine. But also something really neat is we're going to start being able to look at how this is going to work in a human form. So in a lot of third world countries and here in the U.S., the parasites are a large problem Um living conditions and uh, the food and water that we drink, we can start looking at a natural way to get rid of all these problems in the human world as well. Awesome. I love it. This, this plan's here for a reason. We we might as well be doing something with it, right? Definitely. Awesome. I guess my last question, uh, Morgan, is any other products that you guys are working on or any other solutions you guys are trying to get out there into the world? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the parasitic part is really what we're focusing on right now. Uh, that it would just be a huge deal if we could come across with this all-natural product uh, to cure or to get rid of parasites. Um, but, you know, just looking at whole plant extraction. So we're doing that daily. It's finding, you know, not only the cannabis plant, but looking at other plants, seeing how they work together with the cannabis plant. We're getting some really cool results. So a lot of the, uh, the uh, stuff that we're going to be coming out with uh, within the next four to six months is all going to be a mixture of uh, different herbs and different plants going with the cannabis plant. So anything that we uh, can add to the cannabis plant, not to make it better, but to work side by side with it. That's really our main focus in whole extraction. Awesome. Well, we appreciate and thank uh, companies and individuals like yourself. I started as a, a smoker. And I was a weed smoker and I always knew there was medicinal benefits behind this plant because it made me feel better. Um, sure. But now 20 years later, we have companies like, you know, Star Hat Manufacturing and, and products like you guys have for dogs and horses and humans. And what is your research and development team like? And I mean, what's the budget for this thing? Because I mean, clearly you guys have uh, a lot going on and you're growing. So is it is that growing as well? Absolutely. You know, uh, we're, we, we, we spend a lot of time, effort and money in the research and development part um, just because it's very important. We don't want to turn a product out that we're not a thousand percent sure of and that somebody in our family, whether it's our dogs, our horses or us, are, are, won't take. Uh, so it's a very simple thing for us. It's not about the money. It's not about the time. It's about turning out a quality product for other people. Excellent. Uh, Morgan, thank you so much for being a great guest on Dro TV today let everybody know where they can find more of you and uh, star hemp manufacturing. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, check us out at www.doctorshempsolutions.com and uh, any of the uh, cannabis shows around, we try to make it to, to all of them that we can. So check us out on the web and you can buy all of our products there and find out a good way to get in touch with us there as well. So thanks again. You're welcome. I'll make sure we have uh, links to the website down below. Morgan, thanks again for coming on the show. If you enjoyed this episode, go down and hit the like button. And it certainly helps with our algorithm, get more great guests like Morgan on here. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to Dro TV on YouTube. That's it for today's show. Morgan, thanks again. And Absolutely. Thank you. We'll see you next time.